some fish on the grass burner. Nicky Informative Fisherman here, back out with my buddy Matt Frazier. We came out to uh, a private ranch today. This lake's bigger than the one I live on, and we had to rough it out and launch down a dirt road and take the time getting the new uh, sponsor boat in here this year, the VT-17 by Crestliner. And uh, right off the bat, our concentration today is to focus on topwater and give you guys topwater tips. That being said, Matt's got the first one on the inline prop bait just like that. Decent little bass to get it started. I've already missed a couple of frogfish, but we're hoping to break down a lot of tips and techniques to make you more proficient at fishing topwater, whether it's small or big, because topwater tends to get a much bigger fish in general. Yep. If you could get six or seven topwater bites in a day and execute them, you're probably going to be in the money. Ain't that right, Matt? Yep. That's, he does that's it. My he, strategy. <laughs> he does it all the time. Yeah. He goes to a place and he's like, "Hey, I, have you fished this place before?" I'm like, "Yeah, a couple times. I got my methods." And then he goes and throws top water in place that he hasn't finished. And then he's like, hey, got to check. Yeah. Just like that every time. So, well, hopefully we'll be able to break down this stuff for you guys, show you some big fish, and uh, get you guys educated a little bit more. So hang with us. I think I'm going to have to tie on a grass burner. There you go. Yeah, a grass burner will be killer for sure. I'll go back to the frog once that sun gets straight overhead pins them down for us. That's two open water bites uh, Matt just got and my frog bites also came off the side of the mat. What that means is it's relatively early in the morning. The sun hasn't been beaten down on the water yet. The shadows are still long allowing these bass the freedom to chase. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking that black and red grass burner here. Little guy, little guy. Uh -oh. Spot. Burn a fish. Decent fish on the grass burner. Woohoo! Now, in case you guys haven't been watching my commercials, Evolution Baits has came on board recently, and they have the grass burner designed by Brad. What's Brad's last name? Oh, you got Kowalski. Me. Kowalski. Yeah. Sorry, Brad, if yeah. I'm pronouncing it wrong, but that man has designed an incredible bait, and he's partnered up with Evolution Baits. This is an inline prop bait right here. This is like a, this is the evolution of the buzz bait. It's got two oversized trebles, a wider prop on the front to where it can deflect easier, a bigger, wider body, which gives that buzz bait more lift so where you can slow it down. Or if you want to burn it, it stays balanced. It's things got, it's like, it's like a built in kill. That's why they call it the grass burner. You can fish this thing over a lot more stuff than you could a traditional buzz bait. And it's got two big treble hooks. So talk about hookup ratio. I'm loving this bait guys. So when I'm fishing a buzz bait style bait like the grass burner here, you're going to see there's sparse mats out over this deeper water. There's mats up tight. There's not any particular piece of structure or cover I'm focusing on. I need to cover a lot of water. So long cast is imperative. Being able to bring a bait down the grass lights, a bait, a bait I can work fast or I can work slow more than likely I'm going to work it fast when I have a lot of stuff to cover to figure out where I'm finding active fish right off the bat. And the grass burner is critical for that. You can bomb this thing a long ways and cover a lot of stuff. I'm sitting 50 feet out off the bank covering grass lanes, covering submerged grass that I can see, covering drop offs or humps fast. I don't want to start off slow in the morning with the top water. I want to throw a top water that's going to be picking it apart fast. Standing timber can also be absolutely perfect for a buzz bait style bait. Uh, these props are real loud. You're either going to cause a reaction strike with a loud prop like this or you're going to get them thinking that something's running from something else and they're going to get it. Some days you have to be more subtle. Some days they won't eat a buzz bait but sometimes a buzz bait's the only thing that's going to irritate that fish enough to get them to come up and strike. But it's perfect for early in the morning, later in the evening, overcast days covering a lot of water to find them and when you do get bit on a buzz bait it tends to be a much better fish oh, 
<laughs> that was a grab. Oh, that's a better fish. Yeah. Nice. Out of nowhere. Here, we'll get around. <laughs> oh, hello. Ooh. <laughs> we just barely put in over here, and we've been working this bank down. But what, what we're trying to accomplish here is first thing in the morning, you, you can take advantage of having shallow fish still. Because it, it's going to get hot. It's not going to be super hot, but hot enough to move the fish out into deeper water. So what we're doing is we're, we're focusing on this hump that's out in the middle of this uh, lake that we're fishing. And the hump, what it does is it can hold those bigger fish a little later in the morning. And we're starting our way, working our way around this hump from the outside in. So basically there's, the hump comes into deeper water here. So this, this edge we're going to work with, we're working with a little bit louder baits. Uh, trying to get some big explosions to come up out of here out of the deeper water. And what we're going to do, we're going to gradually work our way into the shallowest part of this hump. Hopefully, somewhere in between, we're going to run into some bigger fish. Well, I was looking for the bigger, badder beasts, throwing a big, like, swim bait style wake bait like the rats here. You know, when you're out fishing, in a country area like this, farm ponds or farm lakes or anywhere there's a, just a ton of tall grass, there's gonna be a ton of rats around that system. And probably when I was a little closer to the bank, I should have fished the rat a little bit more. But I'm throwing that bigger bait, looking for the bigger beast. These big female bass have no problem eating a little mammal swimming across the water, that's for sure. But uh, this wasn't one of them. <laughs> that little buck right there, he wanted to eat himself a big old whopping rat. I don't know what he was thinking, but I do know he was hungry. So let's get another. Prime example that a big bait does not always catch big fish. During the uh, post spawn like this, you're always gonna deal with a ton of bucks, but you have to know that a lot of the time there's a ton of bait in the system and the bait will tend to conjugate, conjugate around a certain area to where it will hold small fish and big fish in the same areas. So don't always think that you're on small fish during the post spawn. A lot of the time, those big ones and small ones are still holding near the same stuff. Hang with us, guys. We'll be right back. Are you into diving, surfing, or fishing? And have you checked out the Salt Life YouTube channel yet? From awesome surfing insight to scuba diving locations and in and offshore fishing, bundled up with all sorts of crazy cool footage, the Salt Life has you ocean lovers covered. So go check out their YouTube channel and tell them if sent you. Bigger, better, batter. The evolution of the buzz bait is upon us. The evolution baits grass burners, a high performance bass snatcher machine. High end components, inline displacement, larger profile, balanced body for fast or slower retrieves, better deflection, and oversized treble hooks. You wouldn't bring a slingshot to a gunfight, would you? Find out more at evolutionbaits.com. Attention Northern California anglers, have you been to boat country in Escalon with one of the largest selections of welded aluminum fishing boats from North River, Hughescraft, and now Crestliner? Chances are they have the right boat for you. And did I mention they have a full service center to take care of all your repair or boating maintenance needs? If you're a boat owner or just looking to become one, you owe it to yourself to check these guys out. Visit BoatCountryUSA.com or stop on by. We'll see you there. Ever tried pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. Did you know that Beeline makes specialized lines for all your fishing needs? From the super strong abrasive resistant CXX or the low stretch super stealthy CX Premium. Or maybe you're looking for invisibility or super bite detection with Beeline's 100% fluorocarbon. No matter what your needs, P-Line's got it covered. To find out more, visit P-Line.com. P-Line, baby! Hey guys, did you know that Jurors Truly is now hosting Lucky Tackle Box's monthly pan fish instructionals? And aside from relentless fish catching, I'll be breaking down the rigging and the gear you need to get going along the way. And of course, a few extra tips to help you score more fish on the goodies included in your box. So remember, the tug is our drug. So go visit LuckyTackleBox.com and get signed up today. Oh, you heard they got weapons of big fish destruction? Well, you heard right. Biwa Fishing Performance is the newest company hit the U.S. market by storm. With some of the sickest swim baits around and non-cookie cutter style lures that you could ever get your hands on, it's time to show these fish something new. Visit BWA.com.
Bond out female, smaller yeah. female. I mean, you can see this. This thing's got about a four and a half, four pound head on it. And the fish probably only weighs about two and a half, two and three quarters, maybe. And you can just see how the belly's so skinny, how it tapers down so quick. Typically, anything pre-spawn or spawn, this fish is gonna be a lot healthier looking, a lot fatter in the belly, and they're super narrow there. So that's kind of what you look for when you look for. Which could give you some great clues because during the post-spawn, topwater is also an extremely good choice. All right, now that we've worked around the deeper ledges and the deeper outside grass on this pump right here, like Matt said, we had to work around from the outside first. So now we're gonna start moving into the guts of it, fishing over the top of the mats. That's where your frog comes back into play. You know, a lot of the time guys get too anxious and they come up and they throw right to the guts of something that looks perfect. And that, you may only run across one or two perfect things in that day. So take your time and pick it apart. Fish a prop bait, exposed hooks, a buzz bait like the grass burn or the big rat, something that's gonna cause those deeper fish to come up and eat. That could be right on that transition to this hump. But now we're gonna go into the guts now and move up a little bit tighter right on top of the stuff that we're fishing and see if we can pull one out from under these mats. You know what I think's going on? You know where, you notice where we're getting bit? It's right where the wind current reaches, the, breaks off of the slick on these hey. mats. I'll take that size all day. Another spawned out fish, but big old heads on them, man. Frogfish over the little uh, rock wall, way back in there, in that slick calm stuff. We're actually fishing right here because, oh man, he wasn't going nowhere. I had both prongs right in the roof of his mouth. Not bad. We're fishing right here because the wind picked up and it's blowing right into here, which is perfect. It, it decreases the amount of light refraction that penetrates down and it penetrates horizontal. And why that's so much better is it's kind of emphasizing with just a light amount of chop to where you could still work a top water, almost to the point to where it's uncomfortable working a top water is actually when it's the most effective because it breaks up that light still on a sunny day. And a lot of these fish that would be concentrated in these mats are more willing to pull out just like long shadows, just like overcast when you get a little bit of chop in there. Plus it's blowing all the bait fish right into this bank. So I've switched up my bait selection a little bit and I'm throwing a Strike King Sexy Dog. It's like a walking pencil style bait. They have a ton of rattles. And the reason I'm doing this is there's so much submerged mats here. A walking bait, a bait that glides side to side, you know, a walk the dock action can draw a fish up from deeper. So I'm just fishing this, what looks to be open water, but you know, at deepest six, seven, ten feet, there's mats down there. To draw up a bass from that deep is very possible, but usually a walking bait or a very noisy bait tends to do it. It was relatively calm. Uh, the noisy baits were getting bit, but they seem to be bit, getting bit closer to uh, those mats that were closer to the surface. Uh, now I picked up a pencil style bait strictly to try to draw fish up from those submerged mats. That was the classic pause. Oh, there we go. Double. Double. Got another tip for you guys. You see right here, up against the side of this levee, that was a lot more calm and protected back here. Matt and I are focusing on targets further away from the boat, farther away from the boat, excuse me, proper English for you. And a lot of the time you want to go more subtle. The slicker, the calmer, the cleaner it is. Subtle from a distance, you want to get fur farther away from the boat and you want to use a bait that's more subtle. So instead of me really slapping my walking bait, I'm just trying to ease a nice smooth, I'll slow the presentation down a lot better because they can track it and they can find it easier in these calmer, quieter, cleaner conditions subtle a lot of the time is going to outweigh that aggressive presentation but if you're fishing in and around marinas where there's a lot of boat noise a lot of wind a lot of chop a lot of dirty water you do need baits that displace more water and baits that make more noise 
grass burning fish over there. Pencil bait fish over here. Uh, yeah. This is bigger. Huh? I think you got me. Yes. Yours looks thicker. Grass burner catches bigger fish. Grass burner catches bigger fish. You heard it right here. Live on the scene. <laughs> 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 there we go. This is the Biwa S trout or the Strout, whatever you want to call it. Woo! This is a floating version. This is a seven and a half, almost eight inch bait, like a big swim bait here, uh, made by Biwa, which is really, really cool. Super subtle, has a snake action. I'm throwing it out there on top. I'm slowly creeping it to where the back of the swim bait is out and twitching it occasionally trying to draw these fish up. He tracked it all the way to the boat and ate it right there. Not big, but this will catch you a giant. It probably will today. Another one on the S trout. A little better fish there. Seen him follow it all the way out and grab it. <laughs> That's the best part about swim baits, man. They track a big swim bait out like that, come and eat it right at the boat. It doesn't get much better than that. Beautiful. The cool part is it's real subtle, it's calm, the sun's straight overhead. These fish are getting lethargic, and by using this floating, bigger, natural looking swim bait, they, they see this as a big wounded prey. They have to come out and expect it, you know, expect to get a free, easy meal, a big meal. So even though it's not the prime conditions, this can still encourage them to come out and get it. And like Matt says, and I say, the big fish don't follow rules. They choose to eat when they want to eat. Another rat on a rat. They're eating rats, right? Oh, look at that. Perfect. <laughs> Real slide. A rat fish. There was two with. There was two with them. I missed the big one, the little one got it. <laughs> so once I get this fish off, I'll show you guys my retrieve that I figured uh, figured out with these S trout that works phenomenally well. So one of the things that you're gonna find if you fish a swim bait, whether it's floating or sinking or anything, standard rule for a swim bait is a slow steady retrieve gets the attention of the fish and slow and steady of this is right across the surface soon as I see a dark silhouette behind it I real fast once real fast again and then tap tap and it really makes it look wounded and you could sit there and you could jerk this and twitch it and then let it pause this thing turns back on itself to where you can almost twitch it like a frog and it'll stay in that spot the farther the fish is away from the boat that you see when he's tracking it, if you start that and keep twitching it and trying to keep it in that one spot, your odds of catching that fish greatly increase. They cannot stand the S-trout when it's twitching over and turning over on its side and bellying up. That's always when they execute it. Every single fish I've caught on this so far today has been on that same thing. I had two followers earlier just doing the slow and steady. They didn't want to commit to it, but as soon as I started that twitching back on itself, I have three out of five have executed on it since then. So, working great. <laughs> this time, I'll show you another fun thing to do with this bait. You normally want to throw it on like some 80 pounds, some 65 to 80 pound braid when you're doing this. I'm throwing on 20 pound fluorocarbon on my I-Rod jumbo rod right now. I'm gonna throw it out here and show you. One really fun thing to do with this floater is to snap it around on the surface like that, make it look like a big wounded fish or another fish up trying to eat bait. And I was just snapping it on the surface like that and that little bass just came up and absolutely annihilated it. Well, double buzz fish. Double buzz. And double hook. Trade the hook and the hook. Huh. go one on the frog I'm gonna talk a little bit about 
why I caught this fish and how I could have spent 30 or 40 minutes not catching a fish in this exact same spot. So if you look at all this right here, and you look down in the water right here, you're going to see all this plant life up under the water, all this tall grass. See the bait down in here? Always a good sign for frog fishing. You see little bluegills down in there. But why did I not cover this whole area, which we just blew through? And of course, there's going to be bass all throughout this stuff. But the difference is it's huge. I would have spent probably a solid hour trying to cover this. And when I pulled up out here, if you look in the water, you could see that grass. It's dropping down into a deeper spot out here. So I'm focusing on the mats during a, on a transitional area. You can see it's dropping down deeper. And these are the first mats as it comes up shallow to that grass. And then I have isolated mats out there. So I'm going to concentrate my focus on around a higher percentage area. And one of the same things uh, that I hear a lot of the time from guys about missing fish on the frog, it's usually because you set the hook too soon or the fish was just too small and didn't get it. There's nothing you're going to do about that. Or the fish swirled at it and was going to come back up and get it the second time. Bass love to wound things that are on top of the mat and then come back and get it. And a lot of guys see that boom and reel down and set the hook fast. But, you know, just like a worm or anything, let them get it. it they're not going to spit it out. If they really want it and they get it, a bass will hold on. I've had them hold on to frogs for over 30 seconds where I took a co-angler who didn't know how to frog fish and their line comes swimming all the way to the boat. I'm like, hey, you got a fish on there. And then they reel down and pull and they got that bass. But if they would have pulled it away too soon from a warning strike, they never would have caught that fish. So try to tell yourself when you're fishing a frog to really slow down and be patient and make sure they got it before you set the hook. Because a lot of the time you have a fish that's hot, he committed in that area. And if you pull it out of there, it's done. Versus if you made sure he got it or he came back a second time after trying to wound it, and then you're going to put that fish in the boat. You know, relax and take your time with the opportunities that you're given when frog fishing because setting, too, setting the hook too soon is a huge mistake. Guys, another good frog tip for you guys here is if you look across this mat, there's thick parts of the mat, there's big, huge openings in the mat, and then within the big parts, the thick parts of the mat, there'll be little weak spots. So what we're doing is we're basically casting across these mats and we're working it across and we're not spending a lot of time where it's real thick, you know, we're, we're trying to get it to the areas that's a little weaker. That's the ambush point. That's the point where the bass has the best chance to actually make contact with the lure. Now, occasionally you'll get them to blow up through that, that thicker stuff, but the, the more consistent bite is going to be those little weak areas and stopping, pausing, keeping them there as long as possible. Maybe try to walk it within each one of those little spots if they're big enough to do that. And then, I mean, that's what's going to give you your best hookup ratio. Once again, warning swirl, second time take. It mangled that frog too. <laughs> oh. No. That's not a bad fish, mate. Alright guys, so I uh, guess we're not going through there? No, we ain't going that way. common rig and it kind of lands into the waking slash uh, slash topwater category and what that is is the weightless fluke get that out of his jawbone there nice fish it's basically taking a heavy duty EWG hook extra wide gap and Texas rigging it weightless the benefit of this and this is uh this is the super or the magnum which one is this Super fluke. This is the super fluke. fluke. Seven inch. This is the seven inch. Yes. 
So this is the seven inch version right here. And the pure white is reflecting a ton of UV. So it's showing up like a disco ball for these fish. You can twitch it just like a jerk bait, bring it over these grass mats, twitch it around the bottom edges of the grass mats and let it fall. I would say this still lands into the top water slash wake bait category. The weightless Texas rig fluke is deadly. <laughs> that a chunkier one there. Yeah. Not a three. This might be good. Yep, good fish. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, guys. It's a nice one to and a nice hot fun day of catching a bunch of topwater fish out here. Nice chunky one. I mean, look how healthy that, look at that hook set. That's unbelievable. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> you know, guys, uh, that's it for topwater tips uh, part one. We're probably going to do two or three of these for you guys out here with my buddy Matt. Matt's always fishing with me, hangs out with me, good buddy now. Whether it's at my house, on a ranch, on the delta, wherever, I think it'd be a cool thing to do another thing like this along with the bank fishing tips video to give you guys more top water tips and techniques. There's a million of these things that we can cover, so we didn't throw it all in this one episode, but we greatly appreciate you guys watching. Visit informativefisherman.com. Add Matt on Facebook. What's your Instagram? Was it Fraser Luck? Fraser Luck Fishing. Fraser Luck Fishing. Add Matt on there. He's always posting up some beasts. <laughs> Later, guys. See you guys.